right, so here we are today with our $500 Craigslist Ranger. So you saw in a previous video I had made where I went through and I was uh, determining the issues I had with it and what I kind of need to change to, um, you know, drive it on the road reliably. So I got Kevin here with me today from Junkyard Digs. He runs an Instagram page, also has his own YouTube channel. I'll drop the link below here where you can see it. But um, anyway, we're going to work through this thing together since I have his help. Again, we got some brake line stuff, high idle issue. We're going to wire in the tack, um, timing belt. Um, again, just some of the stuff as we went through in that previous video and diagnosed, which again, that's going to be linked below as well if you want to see kind of how we went through and determined that it had these issues. On top of the thermostat, it could have a blown head gasket. So what we're going to go ahead and do is I got a pressure tester, and the first thing we're going to do before we get to firing this thing up and messing around is we'll um, pressurize our cooling system and then let that sit for a good 30 minutes to an hour and see if our pressure bleeds down. Um, if it does, and if it bleeds down dramatically and we don't see any leaks from our hoses, uh, there's a good chance we have a blown head gasket. So um, I'll pump that up and we'll have a look. All right, so now we got our coolant. Uh, system tester all plumbed up here. Um, pretty nice unit. Um, they're pretty cheap. I think you can rent these, but I bought this one in particular for 40 bucks. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and just pump it up to the cap rating. We don't really need to go past that. So 13 PSI is what we're going to go to. And then we'll let it sit and see what happens. Leave it. Sit. All right, so about 30 to 45 minutes has passed, and we haven't um, bled down the cooling system whatsoever, so that's good news. Um, I'm fairly confident in our head gasket. I really didn't want to get into that if I didn't have to, so it looks like we're just going to be able to cook through the basics now and be all right. So as you saw in the previous video, we tested our uh, cooling system there with an IR gun to see what temperature it was getting up to, and it's staying pretty cold, so we do have a failed thermostat that's hanging open, and again, that's kind of causing havoc with the heater. It's not really heating up all the way, and the engine's kind of hanging up in open loop, and that's why we have a high idle. So we're going to get this swapped out, and then we'll start it up again and see if we corrected the issue. All right, so we're going to attack our thermostat housing here, and if you remember right from the first video, our timing belt is completely hashed. So luckily this isn't an interference engine, but... Um, you know, I'm just going to change that anyways. It's just good practice. So what we got to do first here is get our um, fan off so we can get our pulley off and get to our thermostat housing and our um, timing cover. So we got Kevin working through that right now, which he's, he came up with a pretty ingenious way there to loosen those up where he kind of dogged it with his screwdriver and then could get on it with the wrench and loosen it up that way. So that worked out pretty nice. You didn't have to put the belt back on there. Too. All right, we got the fan bolts off, so that guy should just pop right on off there. Want to watch our radiator. Don't smack that. You don't want to hit your radiator with anything and sever one of the cores. So that's Safest all off. Way is down. Yeah, definitely. All right, so we got our fan off here and taking a good look at it, the fan clutch seems pretty good. There wasn't any play in that like I had previously said, but now we can just get up real close here and see that the fan is pretty cracked up so we might either replace that or go to a metal fan of sorts but for now it's okay and we'll leave it in there but we probably want to keep this in mind and address this at a later date we really don't want this to uh yeah it's got some pretty significant cracks we really don't want that to fly apart so for now we're going to leave it but um you know this is kind of stuff you want to look at when you're going through things and we'll probably want to replace that eventually but with our thermostat housing we're going to want to drain all our coolant so we don't just run it all over ourselves and all over my driveway here. So it has a little petcock on the bottom with a tube. And as you open the petcock up, um, it lets coolant flow through that tube. So if you want to start opening that, we have it going down into a bucket there. I'm going to take the uh, radiator cap off. So then we have an open system and that helps it to flow much better when you're draining it. And also this is a good opportunity to, uh, put new coolant in the engines. This stuff looks pretty old. It's been in here a long time. So um, old coolant gets pretty acidic and can eat up a lot of your components like your head gasket or your water pump. So again, good opportunity to change this right now. All right, so when you're working through replacing your uh, 
your thermostat. You also want to check your hoses, make sure you have good wall thickness. As your engine runs, um, the older it gets, it's going to start taking material out of your hose. It just kind of, it's just how it wears. So, um, you know, a lot of things corrode up here. You want to take a look, make sure it's not all corroded through your hose. You know, you don't have any thin spots. And if you do, of course, you want to replace this. All right, I was taking a look at my radiator hoses here. And even though my top one is good, my bottom one is pretty shot. And it, again, at this point, we have the coolant out of the vehicle. So it just makes sense to me for a couple extra bucks just to replace all the radiator hoses at once. Again, I'm going to be driving this vehicle in the winter. So um, I really don't want to have a failure at that time when it's freezing cold here in Iowa. So anyway, it's got all these factory um, little clamps on it. And I'm pretty sure nothing has been touched on this vehicle from the factory at all. So um, they're rusted in there pretty good. It's got a big long thread that's fine thread. So um, the other one I think I can get off, but this one in particular, I don't want to be wrenching on it too much because uh, this radiator is plastic. So what I'm going to try and do is buzz through with the grinder and cut these two little pieces and be able to pry this apart and get this off without destroying my radiators. So I guess we'll just see what happens. And always wear your safety glasses, which I'm not doing. All right, we got these popped off here and pushed out of the way. And now we can pull our radiator hose right on off and we didn't damage our junk plastic radiator one bit. And we can take our hose into O'Reilly's and get a new one. So since we're in here, we're also gonna go ahead and change our water pump. I did pick up another one from O'Reilly's and um, with the fan off here, I can really get my hand in on here on the shaft and it's pretty loose. So um, I can feel play up and down. So we're gonna go ahead and change this out. It's pretty rusted up too. And we're gonna just replace our radiator hoses in everything included. Water. Right in your shoe. Both That's where you them. want it. Both of them. At least your foot's not gonna overheat. <laughs> Boil over. So we're getting our thermostat housing off here and it's a 10 millimeter. The uh, 2.3 liter is kind of interesting as the years went on because the blocks from the 70s, so everything's pretty American down there, but the cylinder head, the eight plug unit, is um, got a lot of metric stuff on it because it came along at a later date. So anyway, we're trying to get our bolts out here and um, I'm hitting my socket with a hammer because if you these are pretty tight in here and if you get a big breaker bar, um, what you're going to do is just shear it. So there's rust and corrosion kind of holding it in there and when you shock force it, um, a lot of times it'll break that free and you can get your hardware out without um, you know snapping it off in there and we really don't want to go having to drill all this out so anyway we're just gonna keep working through this and there she goes and now just comes right on off of there and we can see our old thermostat in there and we're gonna scrape all that junk that just naturally fell down right in our hole all right, so we're getting our hardware off here and we see that our bottom bolt actually has coolant in it. So what we're going to want to do when we put this back in is we're going to want to put sealer on this guy, a uh, thread sealer or pipe sealer, or else we could have a leak from around our bolt. So that's something to keep in mind. But now we got them all off and we're making a complete mess on the ground. And that guy is pretty tight on there. We're going to have to get aggressive with a pry bar, probably right in here wrench. We got a good pivot point here. Give her a few whacks and off she goes. Hopefully. There we go. All right. So as you remember, we had a little pinhole in our brake line out back. So we got uh, the brake line separated at a connection right here. Um, naturally the flare rusted in so we snapped that off but not a big deal because we'll replace it. And also since we have our gas tank right here and I don't really want to drop that out. Um, I got my little pipe cutter and I got a flare tool and we're just going to cut it somewhere back here where it's still good. And just replace this um, length of line right through here with just a little custom bent piece. Alright we got Kevin under here. He's popping our connections loose on our fuel line to replace our fuel filter down there. Move, we, I gotta move my face, but I don't wanna put it in the pile of brake fluid. <laughs> and also, ironically at the same time, we cut our brake line back here because we got a 
good section of brake line yet, you're definitely going to put your head in that. A good section of brake line here where we can flare it and then put a new section in going on to the back and get around our gas tank without much issue. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> I'm here this for more. This is the end of Junkyard Digs. <laughs> Come back next time. Let's see my What's this? <laughs> what? It's literally dripping on both sides. I'm gonna die of fume inhalation. Uh, it's in my eyes. <laughs> Alright, here you want a tape measure, see how long that is? Well, hang on. My feet are by the axle, my head by the puddle. Six feet. That's good enough for me. Six foot. Let's do it. it. One Kevin long. One Kevin. We need a. We need one junkyard digs worth of <laughs> brake line. Okay. So we're down here under the truck. In order to remove Ford's fuel filters, they've even got two designs. One that uses a slip-in retainer that pushes pins back, or pushes a collar back. Those suck. Those, those are junk. Or this one, which is really simple. You slip under this, pop this plastic deal off entirely, and then simply remove the filter. So to install the new filter, simply plug it in. Make sure you got a good seat in here and there's no bends or cracks in your line. Slip your new retainer in. Put it back in place and you're done. Beautiful. So Kevin's under here doing the brake line and the fuel filter and we got the old fuel filter out here and it's always kind of unique to take a look, turn it backwards and uh, shake it out and just all the mud and crap that comes out of these guys. You know, people really neglect to change these and you can just see how much buildup is in these uh, fuel filters. So kind of what happens is there's a lot of sediment that builds up in the uh, the tanks at the gas station. And that's ultimately what you're sucking up into your gas tank and what your fuel filter helps to trap which another interesting bit about this fuel filter is um, it's loose and you can literally blow air right through um, both ends without an issue so I think our filter element had actually failed and we weren't filtering much of anything at all but um, definitely fuel filter something you always want to address and they're always neglected so we got Kevin under here he's already got the uh, the new brake line run now an interesting um, bit on this guy is that uh, that brake line is some sort of a copper compound. They didn't have any steel brake line for me, but it, it bends super easy. As you can see, his little chunk there. You can just bend it by hand. It really doesn't want to kink. I don't know how long these will last, but, um, you know, they actually seem like they'll work out pretty good. But we'll try it out here on this old Ranger. But anyway, he's got it cut to length now, and we'll get our union in there and our compression on there and flare it and get that all made it together and we'll have to bleed our brakes but uh, we're moving right along on the brake issue for sure all right so we're playing around with this um copper line here we got a little chunk left over and it's actually really impressive how durable this stuff is that's not kinked i mean i can blow right through that yeah i mean i mean the steel line would have kinked easy from doing that so that's pretty impressive and it seems like after you bend it yep it shows the normal signs of metal fatigue where it puts stress into the material and it hardens from work hardening so yeah you can't bend it back I think there I finally, finally got it to kink no it straightened out yeah so needless to say that's some pretty good stuff that's, that's impressive it's a little bit dimpled right there but it's Perfectly fine. Yeah, it's actually better than steel line, amazingly. I'm sold. Yeah, me too. Cool deal. All right, so I got the new water pump out here. We got gasket sealer on it, then our gasket, then some more gasket sealer. Now, that seems kind of nuts, and a lot of people just like to use their gasket outright, but um, what you'll have with your block is over time it'll corrode, and even though you scrape it off good and um, clean it all off with brake clean, which I did, so we got a good mating surface that our gasket sealer will seal to. Uh, you'll still have irregularities in that that really um, is hard for the paper gasket to mate up, and you don't want to do this twice. So um, just a little bit of extra gasket sealer goes a long way, and we'll uh, get this guy on there and run the bolts down, and we should be good to go as far as our water pump is concerned. Alright, Luke's awesome. busy talking to his girlfriend for like an hour and a half, so I'm going to go ahead and pop the pulley off here. To get this off, we stuffed the truck in fifth, wrapped the belt around it, I held the belt over here, and then we went at it with the pry bar. 
you know, have to take the radiator out. We did because we thought we were going to hit it with the impact. The impact did not fit. So we went ahead and popped this off, popped four bolts out, and this comes right off with a bit of, bit of leverage. And now we're going to move on to removing the timing belt after getting this guy out of here. We may need a puller for that. We may not have a puller for that. We shall see. There we go. Condition for seven to eight grand. I know it. People like Rangers, and I like them too, and that's I why we have one. I don't want to own a full size truck. I mean, I can see it for towing a trailer someday. I'm going to have to have one for now. Yeah, the insurance is higher, everything's higher. So, this little. Four banger, five speed, gets good gas mileage, you got a truck bed. It's like an El Camino, just like ten times less cool. Yeah, and it's a Ranger. And I don't have a mullet. And we're just breezing through the rest of this here. So we got our cover back on. It's got this little screw that I need to tighten up yet. Uh, your crank pulleys go back on. They have a dowel pin that locate them, again, because they're going to have a timing mark for setting your engine timing. But it's like I said, got a dowel pin in it, so you can't get that wrong. All right, so we got our old thermostat housing here, and it's all cleaned up. Our new um, 192, I guess, 192 degree uh, thermostat in here. It's got this nice rubber seal that goes down and seats on this little beveled edge. So you want to make sure that that's good and cleaned off. So um, that's good to go. Again, like I said, you want to clean all this off. I uh, use a knife or a razor to get all the old gasket off and then use some brake cleaner, parts cleaner, so that um, when we use our gasket sealer it seals. Now I did mention gasket sealer and you do have paper gaskets that come with this stuff but as you see over time this stuff kind of corrodes out and you have pitting and really it's pretty hard for the paper gasket to seal it off so um, you just want to use a light amount but a little bit of gasket sealer goes a long way. I'll run around this edge, put it on the on both sides of our gasket itself and then um, we'll bolt it down give it 30 minutes to a couple hours or so before we put coolant in it and we'd be good to go so gasket sealer light coat again just going to drop our gasket right on here add a little bit of extra to the edges that will smooth out and we'll be good to go all right, so the thermostat housing is all installed. Again, I'm just going to let it set up for a while before we run any coolant in it. But moving right along on this truck project overall, timing belt's been changed, new water pump, and we're looking good. Hey, I made a leg hanger. And awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Putting Ratchet. the belt back on here. It's old school style where we don't really have a tensioner, so how it works since it's a three pulley system is you just have an alternator you want to find a good pivot point where you can put a little tension on it and get that belt good and tight and then you can uh, just tighten her down like you saw Kevin doing and we're good to go with the serpentine belt. So we're getting our air box removed here we're going to change our filter looks pretty good down that tube pretty clean. Hello! <laughs> and um, There's actually a dead bee under the... Nice. That didn't flow as well. But... <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said before in the first video there, you always want to do your basics. So, this air filter looks pretty good and dirty, but you can also notice that there's quite a bit of dirt on the back side of it. So, um, what we got going on here with the air box itself is they had actually snapped off this tab. Well, they had it tightened down, that tab was turned, so um, dirt could actually get up above um, where the air filter was and go through our intake which was just stupendous so we'll go ahead and take a grinder and grind that guy off and do something different 
you can see there again it had snapped off from that spot but anyway we got our new air filter we'll get that in and get everything situated the right way this time okay so we're pulling both our door panels off here because the latch actually doesn't work from the inside and this is a pretty simple fix on most of the rangers so um, we're just got to pull our door panel off and get down to it but we already got our driver's side door fixed so we don't have to roll down our window and um, reach our hand out and open it from the outside latch so we'll get our passenger one done up here and be good to go all that happens on these rangers is that this roll pin will walk out the top so you just hammer that guy back in and you're done good to go so when that roll pin comes up and out basically your gear teeth between your lever and the other side of your latch no longer contact so you don't really have any leverage to open the door but you hammer that roll pin back in everything's aligned and good to go perfect send it all right so everything's all hooked back up now and we're just filling it with water from the garden hose which we're not going to leave in it obviously as it's got a lot of mineral and deposits that would build up on your radiator but we're just kind of trying to purge some of this old stuff out there you know we actually had a good rain here while we were working on this guy and a lot of the coolant that was in it didn't wash away and it actually kind of had a rainbow pattern and you can even kind of see some of it right now there's quite a bit of oil in it and it kind of tastes like tranny fluid so i'm not really sure like i said the people who owned this before weren't necessarily mechanically inclined so we're just running the water on through the uh, radiator if you want to release on that and we're just purging this out as much as we can and we got new stuff to put in it but as you see here we're filling it up and we have our highest point possible on the engine unhooked so even when we go to fill it um, you know we know that we got coolant all the way up to the top of the block now if we didn't do this it would wait for the uh, thermostat to open and you'd have a big air pocket in the top of your engine so this way um, and we see it's cleaning up here a little bit so when doing it this way you know you get all those air pockets out and uh, your engine should be good and safe all right timing belts on water pumps on a bunch of different things are done we got coolant in the engine so now we're gonna take our first start and let it warm up and see if our thermostat's working like it's supposed to and we should be good Neutral. Fire's right up. All right, so she's running good. We got the uh, the topper off. She's on the ground. All the brakes are bled, so I guess it's time for the first drive. This is the first time it's moved out of this spot in probably almost about eight months. So, much work. You're gonna have to fix the shift knob. The real ranger. That's from Marion. <laughs> what the hell? 